Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. That is the quote that kept swirling in my mind during the latest reveal of the PlayStation 5 Pro. To understand what I mean, we need to go all the way back to the seventh generation of consoles. The PlayStation 3 at launch was a more powerful console and in many ways a more accessible console than the Xbox 360, including a Blu-ray disc drive, a more powerful processor, tons of different ports, and also a removable hard drive. But the console was difficult to develop for, there were no games for the longest time, and the console was $500 minimum at launch. Xbox 360 on the other hand had Call of Duty 2, Gears of War, Forza Motorsport 2, Halo 3, and Condemned Criminal Origins all for $300 at the lowest price at launch. What did Sony have? Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2007. Yeah, Sony fucked up. It took years of releasing high quality games and dropping the price over and over again, along with several features finally allowing PlayStation to surpass Microsoft in sales in the final years of the console's life. So when the eighth generation of consoles rolled around, Xbox revealed their media box that also couldn't trade games and needed a fucking internet connection to work where the guy spearheading this hunk of shit said, quote, We have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity is called Xbox 360. Right. So stick with 360. That's your message if you don't, well, you don't like it. If, if you have right. zero access yeah. to the internet, that is an offline <laughs> device. Oh, and it could also play games for $500 minimum at launch. Sony pulled up with their PS4 and was like $400 minimum. <laughs> the downfall of Microsoft during the eighth generation allowed Sony to propel themselves forward selling 117,000 units, and even allowed them to maintain an upper hand in the sale of the PlayStation 5. Did you know that the subscribe button lights up and you say subscribe? It's a pretty cool feature. You should press that subscribe button. I can still remember how Sony was unable to supply the incredibly high demand for the PS5. It became almost like a luxury car of the tech world. Having a PS5 was like a status symbol. Like, oh shit, you have one of those? But once more and more people started to get their hands on the console and the supply ramped up, this mindset slowly faded. And just recently, Sony decided to unveil their PlayStation 5 Pro. And man, has Sony learned fucking nothing? $700 for this fucking thing? And another $100 for the disc drive? The fucking disc drive? Is this an out-of-season out April, April Fool's joke? joke? You have to buy the fucking stand separately? Something I want to clarify is that before I start shitting on Sony a ton, I'm not a PC master race guy or a, or a PlayStation hater. I have the PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4. I love these consoles and I've poured hundreds of hours into each. I've poured hundreds of hours into these consoles. I fucking love these things. I still play games on the PS2, PS3, and PS4. I just wanted to address this because something that I'll get into in a little bit is that Sony fans aren't exactly taking this whole thing well. Anyway, I actually can't believe that this is what we're getting for some minor upgrades at frame rates I've been able to consistently get on my almost 5 year old PC. The worst part is that the meme that the PS5 has no games is honestly kind of true. Like what games does Sony have for the PS5 that makes me think, yeah, I want to buy the console? I mean you have like, The Last of Us? Part 2 Remastered? <laughs> okay, okay. That's not totally fair. Y'all have some really good games. You'll have like the new Astrobot game. That game looks fucking fantastic. I think it looks really good. And then there's also the Demon Souls remaster. That looks fucking awesome, even still. And like you have Gran Turismo 7. Oh wait, I can wait, I have that on my PS4. All of the best fucking games on your dog shit little box are available on Steam now. Why would I buy a PS5 for God of War, Spider-Man, or Helldivers 2 when I can just get all these games on PC? Instead of showing us games that take advantage of the hardware to actually like do things that no other game from the previous generation could do, you show us high fidelity backgrounds. Who fucking cares about high fidelity backgrounds? Do you know why Nintendo dominates a lot of the video game industry? Do you know why Nintendo consoles take up half of the top 10 game consoles ever? It's because they make accessible consoles and great fucking exclusive games. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the Nintendo Switch. The console itself is fine, but it underperforms in a lot of ways. Plus the Joy-Cons just don't feel that great to use to me. Like the joysticks are just terrible. I really hate using those things in so many games, especially third party games. Added with the absurd price for everything, like again, getting new Joy-Cons is $100, 
getting the Pro Controller is like 90 or 80, and all their games cost a minimum of $80, and it doesn't really make me want to fuck with Nintendo. But while emulation is pretty good, it's just not perfect for stuff like Joy-Cons. Plus, the portability factor is a really big plus. So yeah, I own a Switch. I wanted to play Smash Bros, Mario Kart, and Metroid, and a few smaller games on the go. Something I can't do on any other system. Especially something I can't do on PC for the price it's being sold at. You see, Nintendo gives you an incentive to buy the Switch because it gives you a product and a service that you can't find anywhere else for that price. The Switch itself is only $400, and even cheaper if you get the Switch Lite. Nintendo created a monopoly on their systems and their games, and it fucking worked. The Nintendo Switch is the third best-selling console ever, and has more than double the sales of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S combined. Even removing three years of sales for the Switch, Nintendo almost meets both consoles combined in units sold. I've already seen PlayStation cocksuckers fighting back against PC gamers by saying, Oh yeah? Well, my console doesn't cost nearly as much as a PC. Yeah, well that's true. My computer cost me 1400 Canadian dollars, an equivalent to around 1000 USD, and my PC can play games, record games, record audio, edit videos, create music, code, do taxes, run a high variety of programs, create 3D models, and even program the fucking games that you play on your shitty little console. Everything the PlayStation 5 can do, a PC can do, and do it even better. My PC is 5 years old and it is currently running Warhammer Space Marine 2 perfectly on high settings. I've had almost no frame dips playing the game. And in time, the PS5 will even be emulated on PC. We're already seeing Bloodborne running just fine on a PS4 emulator. Even looking back to the PlayStation 3, the reason why Sony ended up coming back at the very end of the 7th generation console war is because of a few things. Number one, Sony dropped the price of their console a lot. They made it very affordable and very accessible for the average consumer. And the second thing was they made some phenomenal games. Regardless of what you think of The Last of Us or Uncharted or any one of those games is that they're successful. They sold consoles. At the end of the day, the PlayStation 5 is an interesting console and a pretty good one at that. But Sony needs to get their head out of their ass and realize that releasing a console for $700, then a disk drive at $100, then extra controllers for $70, games at $80, and a fucking stand for the console at $30 isn't going to bring in new customers. You're only going to push away the average consumer. So maybe, instead of repeating the mistakes of the past, you fix them while you can. Or burn in the same pit that Microsoft is in.